Hey guys, this is video 6.2. This is going to be just a very quick video, kind of um, discussing the periodic table as like a little refresher, but kind of in a new twist. Um, so let's jump into page number five. Okay. Um, you're going to want three different colors, whether they're highlighters or crayons or crayons, colored pencils, whatever. Um, just make sure you get three colors. Um, and we're kind of just color the periodic table yet again but with a different intent in mind so one of the things you guys are gonna have to do within naming is you've got to know what the charge of your um, ions are that will be in your um, formulas for ionic naming okay it's very important and you guys can kind of think about this if you think back to bonding right when you had two separate elements you kind of had to figure out well how are their electrons going to balance each other out so that they both have eight okay and that's directly related to the charges now we haven't gotten into how these charges necessarily are um, calculated yet when we come back to redox toward the end of the year we'll talk more about these things called oxidation states but for right now you guys know hey they've either gained or lost electrons and that's what we're going to keep it with <clears throat> so what I want you guys to do is we're going to kind of color in and sort of label three different types of ions and this is going to directly help us when we do ionic naming so the first ones I want you guys to color are all the group one and two the alkali metals and alkaline earth metals um, because we know what their charges are so all of these ones we're doing here is the kind of the type one they we um, those are the ones that we know their charges every time they're never going to change okay so group one and two are going to be included there and then we're also going to come over here to group 13 and notice really what I'm coloring in guys since they give you the oxidation states or these charges on all the elements or most of the elements on the periodic table it's all the ones that only have one charge that's what their charge is going to be no matter what they are bonding with <clears throat> that's how many electrons they are losing Okay, so it's gonna they're gonna have the same set of rules once we get into it. So zinc and cadmium are included there. Silver is gonna be in there, and there's a few other sporadic ones. Typically, I in the past haven't really worried too much about them. You're probably not gonna have compounds with these, but we're gonna keep them the same color here anyway, just to kind of be consistent. But chances are you're not gonna use these last ones in any compound in this class. Um, so basically, wherever you see ones that have just a single oxidation state, again charge. Um, that's where you're what you're going to color in. So these guys right here, um, molybdenum right there, these guys right here. Okay, we're not going to worry about down here with the lanthanides and the actinides. You're never going to see compounds dealing with those. Um, uranium you'll see when we get to nuclear, but it's not going to be in a compound. So these are our type one. Okay. And what I want you guys to write here is this equals type 1. That means their charges are known. Ah, can't write. Okay, so we know what their charges are. Now, <clears throat> type 2, okay, they are going to be the rest of our transition metals. And we've talked before about why are these things called transition metals, and it's because they transition. Okay, they have multiple oxidation states. Look at here on every single box that we're coloring in, there's more than one charge. So it's going to be up to you guys to figure out what the charge is, and you have to include that in your name of these. And again, we'll get into these in the next video, um, but it's a very, very important piece um, that you cannot forget to do. Okay. Now again, these are the metals, so that's where our dividing line is. We're only going over there to the metal with staircase because it's going to be the metals. Okay, we will talk more about the non-metals in just a second. So these ones, type two, we're going to say charges are unknown, which means you got to do a little bit more work to figure out. Um, <clears throat> what those charges are going to be, and you've got to include them in your um, name of the compound. Excuse me. And then the last ones, oops, are going to be our nonmetals. Okay. Notice they can have multiple charges. They can be forced sometimes to. Um, bond or kind of have you know gain or lose more electrons we're not going to be worried too much about that right now um, we're just going to go with their first 
charge, okay, <clears throat> when we get into oxidation and reduction later on in the year, that's where we can talk about all those other charges. They have. Like nitrogen, if you look at it, if I zoom in, right, negative three, negative two, negative one, plus one, two, three, four, like it can be, they can be forced to do a lot of stuff. We're just going to go with <clears throat> um, these guys. We're going to go with their first most common one, except for carbon. Carbon a lot of times will be a plus four, but again, we're not worrying about charges per se. We're just learning, learning how to name right now. We'll come back to all of those um, later on. So <clears throat> these last ones, guys, these are the type threes. We do know their charges, but these charges aren't going to be um, as important to us right now. Okay, it's just more for naming purposes. The ones that are in purple there are going to have a specific rule that they will follow. All right. <clears throat> so again, just kind of a little refresher with the periodic table. We're looking at those charges. The green ones are going to be the ones that we will spend a little bit of time kind of discussing as we go throughout this. All right, that's it.